His name's Alan Gilmore, and he joins us on the line from Fairley. From Fairley right now. Alan, how are you? Thank you for joining us. Pleasure. I, I'm, I'm fine, thank you. Actually, I'm in Tikapo. Oh, uh, Tikapo. Yeah. Okay. Lake Tikapo, just, just below Mount John Observatory. Okay. Um, look, everyone's saying, well, blue moon, there's going to be a blue moon. Um, a blue moon isn't that rare, is it? Uh, no. Uh, well, um, and it's also the result of a confusion of, a, of an American tradition uh. um, that, that we now say a blue moon is when you get a second moon in a month. A second, sorry, a second full moon in a month. Ah. Um, but it, the, the original blue moon, and I think it's still used in, in, in rural US, they, they, had a, they, they have four quarters in a, in a, in a calendar year. Yeah. And there are three moons generally in each quarter. And each moon in a quarter had a particular name. Ah. Because because the moon because sometimes you get thirteen full moons in a year, the if if a if a second full moon occurred, uh, sorry, if there were four full moons in a quarter, then they named the the third one a blue moon. Now this got rather confused in a in a an astronomy magazine uh, article in in the 1940s and that's how we have this now this idea that it's a blue moon is when it's you get two in a month um so the the blue moon term comes from from this u.s um tradition of the of the extra moon in a quarter so they are rare right. and that's why so it all the fact is that, that the passage of the moon Around the Earth, oh, the sun, jeez, don't get me confused. It simply doesn't really, perfectly yeah. match our Gregorian cal calendar. So it's not anything yeah. actually happening in the physical world. It's just a, a discombobulation with the way we measure time and seasons, right? Pretty much. Yeah, that's, that's about it. Yeah. Okay. So it isn't actually blue, a blue moon, and looking at it, <laughs> you won't see anything different, Right. Uh, well, um, there's also this combination of a super blue moon. Now, the, the super oh, oh. bit comes from, from the moon's orbit. The moon's orbit is not exactly round. It's slightly oval. Yeah. <clears throat> so it's a bit closer at some times than others. And it happens uh, that um, just now the moon is at its closest uh, at, the, at the same time that it's a full moon. And it also happens to be what we are calling a blue moon. Right. So, yeah. Um, but a supermoon is also what I regard as a media phenomenon. The, the supermoon is about 14% than the smallest moon when it's furthest away. So you're not going to pick up the difference in size. What people see uh, with a moon near the horizon, <coughs> particularly a full moon, is what we call the moon illusion that always look big when they're low in the sky. So does the sun. It's, yeah. a, it's, an, effect, <coughs> it's an effect due to the... Uh, with the way the brain processes images and things like that, it, it's it's a it's a physiological. Thing. So it's, it's a perceptive real, it looks... issue, not a once again, not a physical real world difference or change. Okay, and yeah, I well, see. The... A lot, I'll be honest, Alan, because I, I've been rising early for most of my working life. I see a lot of moons. The most stunning moons I see are orange or golden harvest moons, low on the horizon against a, a very right. inky black sky. That. That's the yep, most beautiful look, moon you can see, in my opinion. They look big. Yeah. The supermoon, though, does have an effect on tides. Yeah. Um, and tides are very sensitive to distance. Um, uh, and so a uh, supermoon, uh, yeah. we always get, you know, we get what we call spring tides around new moon uh, and full moon because the moon and the sun are in line and their tides are adding up. Um, but when you get a supermoon, the moon is a bit closer and yeah. uh, so the tides um, um, are extra high. So there is a tidal effect, which can be quite a problem in some places.